and welcome to the Celebrity Q&A on HANA Live. And on the show today, I've got the oh so gorgeous and a lady that I totally, totally love, Petula, uh, who's a television and radio personality. Hey, Petula, how are you doing? Hi, Khauna. How are you? I'm good. My nerves are like all over the place. They I'm better now ah. because we're just going to have fun. Right? Okay. Let's just chill. Okay. You know, just your story, basically. Yeah. The people, the stories, eh? Yeah. So let's just take it way back. Take us back to your childhood and your dreams and aspirations as you were growing up. Well, I grew up in a really small town. It was extremely small and I've always been a person that wanted to, you know, see the world because, you know, we grew up watching TV and, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I very early on always knew that I wanted to leave Pikwe. And still now, I always know that I want to see the world. Not necessarily live outside, but but I want to see the world. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think maybe growing up in Pikwe in a small town always instilled that in me. Okay, try and and aspire for much more. Any memorable moments from your childhood, especially you're speaking of Pikwe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, one thing was always about our school. Like, one thing I'll always remember is our school had these... And they had these activities like um, like skate skate um, skating nights and mm. and movie nights and firework nights. It must have been fun. It was so much yeah, fun. Yeah. You know what I mean. So the school always had literally every weekend there was something for the kids to do because you know because it was a small town mm. there was not much that happened so the schools always made sure that okay every weekend there's something for the kids to do so I have really fun memories of that I can imagine have you always had you know aspirations of you know being on television radio how did this happen oh better believe it girl mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I I was that kid who would you know, brush in front of the mirror and sing along to Whitney Houston. So mm. I always wanted to do it. I never really thought that I would. Yeah. I to be know. honest, you know, um, I, I even when I went to school, I didn't study anything related to radio or television. When I left school, I didn't work in anything related to what I was doing. So, you know, I it, it started to feel like that dream I had when I was a child. Had completely died mm. yeah and at that point what were you doing first of all what did you study and you know uh, what industry did you find yourself in before yeah. you eventually ended up as an entertainer yeah i was doing um Koyubi. i was doing my bachelor of business administration in marketing mm-hmm. and then obviously when you study marketing you're told what well, okay well get a marketing job absolutely, you know so absolutely. that's that's what i did even during school the internships and the attachments that i did were revolving around sales and marketing so after i left school i got a sales job at a a newspaper a local newspaper Mm -hmm. and then i went to another local newspaper then i worked for a magazine one of the only fashion magazines at the time i worked Mm -hmm. for la and then after that i went back into sales so for a good six years Mm -hmm. i was doing sales and marketing work and I can imagine with your looks and the voice, you know, of course, you just had to end up on radio and not just radio, but and television. So yeah. tell us about that journey. Yeah. How did you end up on radio and eventually television? As it well? was so by chance because, you know, when I was in high school, after UB, mm-hmm. um, we went for a year no was it after form five but there was a point where i for a year there, there just wasn't much going on and my sister was like well you've always wanted to try out this radio thing i have a friend who happens to be working on radio who happened to be owen rampa mm-hmm. who happened to be the programs manager of yaruna fm mm-hmm. at the time so we literally just walked into his office and he, she was like hey there's this little kid who thinks she can she's do this it. thing. Yeah. He thinks she's it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And he asked me, he was like, oh, so you think you can do this? I was like, better believe it. <laughs> I like that. I can do this, you know? Yeah. And he was like, well, you're in luck because we're starting training. After that, I trained for a year. What, well, close to a year. And that was it. Mm-hmm. And even after I did Yaruna FM, I did it for two years. I left, went back into sales because, you know, sometimes 
family and friends will tell you oh, hey you know yeah. 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 Like, like, when are you getting a real job I know a real job the nine years that I was in radio I always got that so when are you getting like a real yeah. job like, what is it that you late? do outside yeah. of yeah. radio yeah. you know yeah. so I left I went back to the nine to five and then I was just like no mm-hmm. you know it's it's, this is not for me it's not working and plus I got encouraged by my better half and they're following his dream of DJ. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I, I'll, I'll follow mine. We live once. So let's see where this goes. That's beautiful. Yeah. And now Gab's a fam, you know, yeah. Gab's a fam, which, you know, has always been for the more mature yeah. audience. And I understand yeah. you're the youngest yeah. presenter midweek or yeah. you like across, you know, the lineup. Uh, midweek mm, yeah midweek I'm the youngest and how has that been for you like how did you end up on Gabs FM and how are you finding it L- I literally sent in a demo you know when I had made that decision that okay I'm really done nice. with this 9 to 5 I'm going back to radio I stepped into a studio paid for 30 minutes mm-hmm. and I was like okay I'm going to record a demo I'm going to take this demo to Gabs FM mm. I didn't even try any other radio you know sometimes they say speak it into the universe yeah. it works yeah how said we bullet to go away to king get back up this is what I want and this is it this is what I want so I recorded it took it to the programs manager and called every day mm. every single day so I was how like, far how far how you see the bully demo I have on a space <laughs> you know what I mean that, yeah. and then I got a graveyard shift I was like you know what anything you have I'll take it mm. I worked from midnight to 3 a.m. at some point for about a year and then after that I worked on the weekend from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. for another few months mm-hmm. and then I, I got upgraded to the midweek and television now how did you end up on tv well tv was always something that i loved especially because i i was a talent show baby like i used to enter talent shows all the time and i remember before my african dream became my african dream that was ktv mm-hmm. yeah and i was I, we literally joined ktv every year Whoa. until we <laughs> until we eventually yeah. won something you know so when i used to see the videos because nobody did record I get it and play them on television I would be like wow I like I like I like what I see you yeah, know what I mean yeah, yeah. I like the feeling of being able to inspire people just by sitting there and watching a little box you mm-hmm. know what I mean so mm-hmm. from then I was like okay you know what when I do have it then I'll do it if it's in, right in front of me I'll grab it and how far do you want to take this like what a like how far do you uh, yeah, would you like to, yeah. to see yourself like in this industry, you know, as far as the radio space is concerned, as well as television? Yeah, yeah. I, well, for one, I'd like to show people that it's a real industry. Thank you. You know, I can't tell you what I'm doing. Hi, look, I'm on radio. Hi, look, I'm on TV. That should be enough. Mm-hmm. And I shouldn't have to do anything else. And that's why I'm not doing anything else. I'm completely immersing myself in it. It's an industry, mm. and you know, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, yeah, no, what else? What else do you do besides radio and TV? Like, mm. no, this is it. This is it for me. This is, this it. is my work. But you've got, and I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Yeah. These very exotic looks, you know, like you look incredibly <laughs> gorgeous, and with the blue, like I could never rock that kind of color. Me. But yeah, let's just talk about where you originate from, like Kokai, Kikokai, Aumutsuara, because you look Caribbean, something. No, 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 no. So yeah, stop it. No, Kimutaku Sirowe, through and through, like wow. both my parents. But my grandparents, on the other hand, so uh, my my mom's side are from Zambia. You know, a lot of Zambians, maybe like Maruts, but they moved one, and then my dad's side, Lebone, they're from they're from elsewhere. So you are exotic. No, I don't know what. Okay, now uh, you are Mrs. Elkindley. Is that yes. how it's pronounced? Elkindy. Okay. Elkindy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great stuff. So yeah. let's talk about marriage and you know just how you're finding it. You're yeah. married. You spoke about your husband yeah. earlier and the yeah. fact that you know both of you are in the entertainment industry. He's inspired you to go all in. You know, tell us a bit about that. Well, marriage first of all is like an, it's a relationship. You know, yeah. I, I know a lot of people they have these ideas and aspirations yeah, no. yeah, I all of a sudden you know yeah, yeah. these things come out of nowhere but you know we've been dating for years mm-hmm. where um uh, my entire university life 
was with Faust. Mm-hmm. So from first year to fourth year, mm-hmm. yeah, when I was at UB, we were dating and we literally at the end of it were like, okay, well, now we have to start working and we have to start life. So, so let's start it together. Why not? Wow. You know, because we've been dating for so long anyway. Mm, exactly. And we didn't have this idea, yagore, okay, linyalo ki so se no gore, sa to sa. Yeah. And yeah. it's just going to be a continuation of what it is that you're doing. Of what it is already. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So, I love that. Mindset. Yeah. I so, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge step or anything. Hey, I know what I mean. So, you know, yeah, I get mad at you, Caucasian. Hey, gore, I know that I'm not sad, you're touching on my life, you're taking me. You know, exactly. It was marrying your friend, like somebody who's been in your life for a while and just want them continuing, like yeah. you say. So now, over and above that, you're also a mother. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about that, that aspect. Now, well. that was a step I was not ready for. I will uh, tell you uh, what so happened to you. He's like, what are you thinking? Hey. Uh, hey. You know, marriage was easier. Mm-hmm. It was much easier. Becoming a parent is. You, you cannot prepare for it. Mm. And as much as yeah. you know, they can't tell you enough. Exactly. But it's the most amazing thing in the world. I love my daughter to bits. Mm-hmm. She's two years old. Her name's Thureya. Thureya. Thureya, which means Dina Lady. It's, it's Arabic. Because so you know, they have a bit of an Arabian so thing in going Raya, on. So in there's a bit of Mombasa, a bit of Zambia, you know, you know, a like, bit of Botswana. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, motherhood has been such an amazing blessing. Gerauri, Totahela, I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Thank and you. I couldn't have prepared myself for how much you will love and care for another person mm. more than your partner you be you know which so is strange true, eh? it's yeah. true yeah. it's true yeah. Yeah. Tota Hela, they're like your partner plus wow. plus more wow. you know so it, you can't prepare for that i can't imagine yeah. and you know speaking of your daughter and you being a mother you've got this initiative yeah i don't know whether it's called an initiative or a campaign i think it's mm. more of an initiative mm. right yeah Mutzeti life tell us yeah. about Mutzeti life and where Mutzeti Mutzeti life. Mutzeti life. yes yes yeah yes. Mm. Mutzeti life is basically a workshop that we've started it's a monthly workshop that invites new mothers and new fathers to come learn about the ins and outs of Mutzeti. Because I did tell you, you cannot prepare for some of the things that you'll learn. You see them for the first time. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, a lot of young people, especially Malatina, they buy Of course. You know, parents, mm-hmm. so sometimes you're on your own and you literally have no idea what to do. So this program is just basically a support system for all those parents to say, come you learn about anything and everything and every time you need maybe expert advice because we invite doctors we invite midwives and nurses not in just the traditional form mm-hmm. but in the new ways that we find it now absolutely yeah wow great initiative and you. you know something that i'm also a bit curious about before we get to you know your most significant item you and Fawz are Fawz are both new celebrities yes yeah. you know you're a celebrity couple having had you know a bit of a stint you know with that kind of life and it having somewhat ended in a very unfortunate manner mm-hmm. how do you keep up with being public figures mm-hmm. in the limelight but also you know managing to ha- keep your life private and that yeah. kind of thing and what advice would you have to you know other celebrity couples out yeah. There? yeah well I, the best thing to do is to try keep it as well for us i mean mm-hmm. y- yeah. you have your preferences but um a lot of the time we we try and and only go actually not try we only go out when we're working mm. you know what i mean mm. so if he's working at a gig that's when he'll be there if i'm working at a gig that's when i'll be there if not then we take that time to to be at home because mm. for us you know especially when you're in this industry you have to hustle quite a lot you of know course, what i mean so what's the point of of being out there if i'm not if I'm not doing I the hustle, it. you know? I yeah. It. I get yeah. It. I get so na ko yo bona o bitse o re Yeah. Wow, I love that. Now, uh Petula, normally the general perception that people have of people like you is that you've always had it easy, you know, gonna mm-hmm. because and I'm talking about you and your exotic jeans and all of that. <laughs> yeah, it's because of that. You yeah. know, it always yeah. seems like you've yeah. had it easy. Yeah. Have you had any challenges? Never. Wow. Never. Never, Ooh. never. You know, the thing is when a, when a challenge 
Kore, I don't see it as a challenge. Mm-hmm. And I was actually watching a, a movie that was talking about it yesterday. Kore, you know, rather see it as a lesson and not a challenge. Mm-hmm. To to sort of show you what it is you need to change and what it is that you need to do differently. Because, you know, a lot of a lot of people will use a challenge as an excuse yeah. for not pursuing their dream. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, look at you right now, Khauna. You're you're doing it. You thank know, you, and you're you. and you're killing it, killing it. By the way, thank you very much. <laughs> like you, you, you're doing an amazing yeah. thing with Khan Alive. Anybody else who wanted to do what you're doing would have said, ah, "Can you know? Yeah, when am yeah. I gonna find TV time? Yeah. Kimangotari, Kimangotari. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And they would have used that challenge as an excuse for not pursuing their dream. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe I don't. I have found challenges. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I've never let them stop me. Never let them stop me. High five, honey. High five. <laughs> Now, this is our 50th year, yeah. you know, independence as a country. What does, you know, what 50 mean to you? Well, huh. Well, it, it's amazing to see Hurri. After 50 years, Botswana has come such a long way. And for me, celebrating the 50 years and seeing how far we've come as a country says to me that in the next 50, who knows where we'll be you know what i mean Absolutely. the entertainment industry is definitely not the same as it was 5 years ago so this celebration to me just says we're coming and we're still becoming stronger and we're going to be even better in the next few years we're ready for this we are ready to what's, take on the world and what's your most significant item petula well it's a little bit cliche but it's this this right here mm-hmm. this is my engagement ring oh i don't know if you can see it but yeah Oh, this is literally okay. what I got. It like it fits up for UB. Imagine fresh yeah. from UB. Fresh from UB and he was like and it's not even because I don't I don't value rings like most people but it's it's because of obviously what it symbolizes and the memory attached to it. Wow. The day I got it. So. Whoa. I wish we could go into that but it's like a bit we don't have much time. And I just want to thank you very much for having joined us on Khan Alive on the Celebrity uh, Q&A and keep up the amazing work. I love your spirit. You know, like you're just so so refreshing. Like it's absolutely amazing. So please just keep that up and good luck with your future and thank you. Anything that you'd like to leave our viewers with. Well, I mean, what I would love to say to everybody at home is if you have a dream, follow it no matter what. Anything that you put your energy and your time into will bear fruit. Anything, anything at all. So, keep going. Did I say more? I think that's it. There you have it. What's your favorite local song? Favorite local song Drama Boy Katego Salalena. Artist, artist has to be Scar. I used to dance for him. Ooh, that sounds wrong. I I used to back up dance. I was a back up dancer for Scar. There we go. Local fashion designer. <laughs> I love lamet chilume. Hey, lamet chilume is the ish. Traditional dish. I love love bokome balerotse. It has to be balerotse as a soir. The sweet and the salty. Tourist one. Tourist destination. Tourist is first time I went to Kasani. So, yeah, as cliche as it is, it was my first time there and it's it's amazing. I love Kasani. What do you think makes us unique as Botswana? What's that thing? I think our 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 love for people. Yeah, it, it's nowhere as else in the world. Kore, and people say it all the time, but it's true. Uh, Botahela is something that I haven't seen anywhere else and I have traveled outside of the country, the continent. I've traveled and it's nowhere else. Yeah. If somebody was to come from outside, where would you take them and why? I would take them to Bulembush because they have the most amazing three cheese pizza. I love cheese.